Hey, it's me, MLB. Merry Christmas and Christmas Eve to all my listeners around the world. Thank you for this year. Thank you for being here today to listen. And I hope that you all have a wonderful Christmas with friends, family and pets. Without further ado, here is an extended Christmas one shot. Side note, in case anyone asks, this one shot is kind of set in season one-ish of BNHA, so no Shinso, sorry. Here is Snowball Fight, various BNHA ex-female listener. Enjoy. It's so cold. You chatted out through a quivering jaw, cupping your mitten-clad hands to your mouth to blow hot air into them to warm your mouth and hands just a little more. Why are we out here again? So we can smash the boys? Gira replied with a smirk from under her extremely fluffy coat hoodie that almost swallowed her petite little face as she looked out at you in the dark. Can't we just kick them in the butt inside Heights Alliance so that we don't have to be out here in the- oh, Wait, Kaminari's hiding behind the tree up ahead, you suddenly said, pointing to the tree ahead of you that was lit on one side by the light filtering out from Heights Alliance windows, with the tree's branches heavily laden with snow, drooping right down to the ground. After a little pause, you continued. He just said he was going to shake the tree and dump snow on us. Yen! Kaminari's unseen self moaned with annoyance from somewhere behind the tree. Stop reading my mind, it kills the vibe! Thanks, Yen, Momo said with a smile, reaching her hand forwards over your shoulder from just behind you, which you high-fived perfectly without looking back at her. Come out, you AAA battery, your cover's been blown, Jiro called to Kaminari, who was now trying to emerge from behind the tree, but having great difficulty in getting around it without getting any snow drafts dropped onto him told you i'm a d battery because i thank you danky we know it's because your name starts with d you interjected quickly knowing what he was going to say because you'd already heard some dirty thoughts coming from minetta ahead as well yeah knee high pervert is there too you deadpan to your rarica who had come up on your left your quirk is so handy yin she said with a smile at you from inside her worn winter gear you can tell who's around because you can read their minds yeah, well, I've just deactivated for a second because if I hear anything else from inside Minetta's mind, I'm going to throw up, you grimaced, turning your attention to Kaminari, who had finally made it to in front of you girls in the thick, deep snow. Okay, come on, let's make this quick. You guys surrender and we win. Now let's go back inside, you said brightly, hoping your enthusiasm would catch on and everyone else would agree. Oh, no, you don't. We're coming for you girls and we're going to win, Kaminari replied with a knowing smirk placing his left index finger to his head and cocking his thumb like he was pulling the trigger of a gun, then poking his tongue out just for good measure. At that point, you activated your quirk again and caught Juro's thoughts, quickly glancing at her just as she looked away with a blush. Oh, I see how it is, you thought, once you had summed up her thoughts on Kaminari. You do realise we have Yin on our team and she can read your minds, yes? Mina piped up coming up behind your group and catching Kaminari's very bold promise. Yeah, piece of cake, he lied. Yeah, we're pretty screwed, he thought, and you let out a repressed snort of laughter. Don't repeat that, Yin, he said quickly, when he realised that you had heard his true thoughts. Yeah, righto, you replied with a smirk. Just then, there was a boom in the near distance and you rolled your eyes. Uh, here he comes, I can already hear the inner monologue of die, you chuckled to Jiro on your right. As Bakugo came crashing through the trees, filled with snow, the other boys started to emerge from the dark too. Bakugo, why don't you have proper snow gear on? Eureka asked as Bakugo landed next to Kaminari. Move, dunce. Gotta be the first to throw. He sneered, placing his hand across Kaminari's chest and pushing him back a bit. He stepped right up to you and smirked down at you from over his nose, nearly chest to chest with you. You going down, mind infiltration. He growled with a smirk at you. I can get inside your mind, hothead. Don't think you can win when I'm inside you. He replied with a smirk, back up at him, holding your ground. That's what she said! Minetta's comment almost ruined the mood, but thankfully Sero came in last minute and knocked him flying, diverting everyone's attention, except for Bakugo, who was taking a quick second to check you out. Hot. You heard him whisper in his mind, and you looked back at him which made him clear his throat and look away quickly. Yeah, whatever. Let's get started. 
Everyone must follow the appropriate rules of... As Ida's voice faded off into the background, Kaminari piped up. Uh, Kaminari groaned loudly. Who invited Robocop to... Bro! Karishma hissed as he came stumbling up in full red snow onesie. We're all here. No one got left out. We also do need the rules. They're manly. I am ready. Todoroki could be heard as he also joined the group, closely followed by Midoriya, who was following in the trail through the snow that Todoroki had made. Are we all here? You asked Yuraraka beside you while Ida was still talking. She looked around and did a head count of the girls and then counted the boys. Yep, all here, except Sui. She's hibernating because of the cold, she said. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that, he replied. By then, Ida had stopped talking, so you faced the boys again. Okay, girls versus boys, snow fight. Ida already outlined the rules, no quirks, just good old-fashioned fun. If you get hit, you're out. Last person standing wins and wins for their team. Sounds good to me. Bakugo smirked. Good, he replied, because you'll be out first. Your comment caused a small ooh to ripple through the rest of the class, and you chuckled. Wait, how can we be sure that Yin won't use her quirk to read minds? It's the only quirk here that we won't be able to tell if it's being used or not, aside from Hagakure, Siro asked. You can totally see me, I've clothes on, Hagakure commented with a wave from her puffy winter jacket sleeve. Uh, yeah, good. that's a good point, Krishma asked. We can trust her though, right? You won't cheat, will you, Yin? That's not manly. Of course not, he snorted. I have no intention of cheating. I want to win fair and square. Perhaps I can be of assistance. The voice of Mr. Aizawa stated as he appeared from out of the darkness. Aizawa-sensei? The chorus of class voices asked. I went to Heights Alliance to check on... Never mind. And you are all gone, he stated. Yes, we're going to have a class battle, sir, Momo piped up. Would you like to join us? Absolutely not, he replied dully. But I will keep an eye on Yin to keep her quirk erased. Oh, sir, you whined. Why are you picking on me? If you had no intention of cheating, then this shouldn't be an issue. He replied with one eyebrow raised. Okay, yeah, fine, you mumbled. You couldn't help it if you turned your quirk on and off without knowing sometimes. I'm putting a time limit on this game. 20 minutes. If the game isn't done by then, you're all doing push-ups in the snow, he added. Wait, what? Why is this now a lesson? I... Kaminari asked. One! Aizawa shouted, sending everybody into a tizzy, frantically scrambling to get the bases set and ready to go. You have till ten to get set, he yelled, his hair suddenly standing on end and eyes glowing ominously in the dark as he turned his attention on you, staring you down. Ugh, you groaned, quickly turning and piling snow up to make a shield from the white fluff so that you could hide behind it. Oh, this would be so much easier if I could use my quirk. Momo puffed as she worked hard to build a snow wall beside you. You have a snow wall made for us in no time, you replied back, heart beating fast as you pushed to get as ready as possible. Because you had been the first to move, the other girls just fell in line and started building along next to you, perfectly synchronised in your efforts. Meanwhile, the boys were somewhat disorganised. Karishma, in his panic, just started making snowballs, but no wall. Dumb hair! Bakugo barked at him. Make a wall! Huh? Kiri asked, spinning to see that everyone else was building a wall of snow except for him. Six! Aizawa barked. Oh, crap, crap, crap! You squealed, scooping more snow to the top of your barricade. Prepare for battle. Steady yourself. You heard Tokoyami say from somewhere on the boys' side. Ten! Start! Aizawa yelled. Absolute chaos ensued as two balls of snow came hurling towards your side from the boys' side, with Bakugo and Kiri being the first to attack as you and the girls jumped over your snow barricades to get to safety behind it and did a forwards roll onto the other side before scrambling closer to the wall. Girls! Momo called to all of you, getting your attention. Yin, Yuraraka and Mina, you'll be attack. Hagakure, myself and Jiro will make the balls. Once you've thrown, get down straight away to avoid being hit. Okay, you all chorused back, with you taking an already made snowball from Momo, who was making one with her hands as she was giving orders. Before popping up, you listened, cursing that you didn't have your quirk to help you determine the boys' layout from their internal monologue. Get down, dunce! You heard Bakugo yell, 
quickly placing him is in front of you and a little to the left. It's probably about to throw, you thought, as you got your feet under you and stood up, quickly aiming and lobbing a ball directly at Bakugo, who was also standing and getting ready to throw. Since you had stood and thrown in quick succession, you almost got him, but he quickly ducked to his right while letting his snowball go towards you, but missed. Damn it! He shouted. You giggled and dropped back down again, waiting for your next ball. The boys weren't quite as organised as you girls, and Ida was still screaming random instructions, getting on Bakugo's nerves. The balls must be arranged in size order from smallest to largest, Ida called frantically. Why the hell does that even matter, Four Eyes? Just pass me the ball so I can smash their base to bits, Bakugo hollered. Todoroki, you heard Midoriya ask, what are you doing? I can't get the balls to stick together, Todoroki replied in a half-confused, half-sad voice. I never got to play in the snow as a child. I was always forced to be trained. Oh, it's okay. I'll help you, Midoriya replied brightly. We can do it together. Karishma, why is your shirt off, dude? Are you insane? Sarah called. Everyone down, you heard Shoji shout, two balls smacking into your barricade shortly after his shout. That's good, that's good, Kaminari shouted with glee. Two hands, everyone use two hands. No, Ida replied. We should throw with dedication and precision at a time like this. Take time and plan and pass me three, dunce, Bakugo yelled. What the hell? You laugh, yelled, quickly ducking back down before being clobbered with far more snowballs than you ever expected was possible. This is getting out of hand, Momo said frantically, trying to rush her ball making so that you could counterattack. I... Eureka started, having to quickly duck back down as four balls whizzed overhead. I can't get up long enough to see where to aim. They're just hammering us. Suddenly a solid ball of ice smashed through your barricade and hit Jiro in the arm. Jiro! You gasped. Hit! She called, holding her left upper arm with her right hand. What the hell? You gasped, reaching back for the solid ball of ice that was well polished and in perfect shape. Whose is this? You screamed, standing up with the ball. That is mine, Todoroki stated. I made that. Todoroki, you made it? That's a perfect ball, Midoriya praised. You remained standing and dodged a ball from back ago. It is solid ice, you yelled. Oh, yes, I used my quirk, Todoroki stated calmly. We can use quirks now, Kaminari shouted. Oh, thank God. Eureka said with relief, touching as many snowballs as she could to float them up in the air around her. Wait! You shouted, but Hell had been released now and Shoji grabbed six balls in each of his extra arms and threw them all at once, making you drop down in retreat. Yin, just go for it now, Jiro shouted at you. I don't think Aizawa is covering you anymore. You popped your head back up and looked at Aizawa, who was now lying down in the snow in his sleeping bag out cold and you grinned deviously. You looked back at Jiro and she smirked. You online now? She asked in her thoughts. You gave her the thumbs up. She smirked. I'll be your eyes, she said again in her thoughts. Got it, he replied out loud, turning to Momo now. It's an all-out brawl, Momo. No holds barred. Just make a snow cannon. Are we allowed to use quirks now? She asked with surprise, still making balls with her hands. Suddenly a loud boom sounded and your girl's barricade was peppered with a torrent of snow. Bakugo! Karishma yelled. Oh, it is on, you heard Momo say low-key sassily as her arms started to glow and sparkle. Suddenly Dark Shadow loomed up over the barricade and you screamed with surprise. Nothing can stop me, he yelled, growing to a fearsome height before clawing into the barricade and gouging a big hole in it. Wow! You can't do that! But your sentence was cut short as Momo suddenly released a massive torrent of snow from her now-made snow cannon, shooting it so fast it cut a hole through the boys' already sporadically placed barricades. Uh, oh, okay, well, we're even then, you shrugged. Time! Aizawa suddenly roared, making everybody stop in their tracks and look at him. He'd been forgotten in that moment. We won! Kaminari cried triumphantly. Ah. <sighs> You groaned, remembering that Jiro had been hit earlier by Todoroki's ice ball. But before you could say anything about him cheating, Momo cleared her throat. <clears> throat> um, excuse me, she said diplomatically. Please place your hands on your heads, boys. Simultaneously, they all placed a hand on their head to feel a head full of snow. 
She smiled triumphantly. Oh, damn, Kaminari said softly when he felt snow on his head and looked around at all the other boys who had been blasted with snow during her attack. Girls win, Aizawa said plainly. Now get inside. Amid cries of happiness and cheering from you girls and moans and groans from the boys, you heard a voice in your head. Stupid girl. Guess I owe you dumb eggnog for Christmas. You stopped your celebrating and looked across to Bakugo, who had a scowling blush on his face, having known that you had had your quirk still on and spoke into his mind, hoping you'd hear him. You sure do, you replied to him with a smirk as Momo grabbed you into a congratulatory hug. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Okay, that is it. I hope you enjoyed. Happy Christmas once again, and I will see you tomorrow.